there's nowhere as good or quite as nice as Newcastle. It has a different feel. Nowhere in the country can beat the shopping that's available in Newcastle. Eldon Square has provided that central hub, central core to the city. It was a, a leader, it was one of the first multi-purpose shopping centres, certainly on this scale in the UK. Eldon Square does give you the impression that it is one of the streets of the city. 25 million plus people a year minimum come through Eldon Square. The complexity of the project, the pace of the project, it's going to have the newest and the best of everything that Devon has to offer. Its character is an ever-changing character. It's almost seen as everyone's favourite aunt, if you like. £170 million has been spent on transforming Eldon Square from a pioneering shopping centre of the 70s into a development still at the forefront of British retailing into a fifth decade. The Eldon name is central to Newcastle's history. The first Earl of Eldon was Lord Chancellor in the early 18th century. As John Scott, he was immortalised as the man who eloped with Bessie Surtees. The square that carried his name was commissioned by developer Richard Granger in 1824 and designed by the celebrated John Dobson. When completed, it was regarded as a modern sensation. 150 years later, 1970s Newcastle looked very different from today's spectacular city. A brave landmark development, though, would completely change the face of Newcastle city centre. Eldon Square, January 2010. Wow. Right across where are you visited? <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, this is lovely. It's a first view of the new St Andrew's Way for one of the key figures in the centre's life. Yeah, we tried a foot court and then the green market just there, but it's totally different. Nobody has been more closely involved with Newcastle's emergence as a major shopping destination than Gordon Allenson. Gordon was the project manager when construction began on Europe's biggest shopping centre in January 1973. He was also a keen amateur cameraman and recorded the groundbreaking transformation of the city. Nobody had really seen indoor shopping centres and we came in with this revolutionary proposal which didn't suit everyone at the time. It took a lot of courage for, and a lot of work for our senior people to convince the local authorities and the planners that this is what should be built in the city centre. But the innovative regeneration was also surrounded in controversy, with two sides of Dobson's original square being demolished to make way for the new centre. If they hadn't have done that at the time, I think they really would have lost the way this coordinate of the city centre and brought it all together as one shopping experience. For those of us who are old enough to remember what was there beforehand, whilst many people would say some good buildings were, were lost, I think uh, overall it replaced what were some very, fairly poor buildings uh, around the city centre with uh, a modern shopping centre. The contractors for Eldon's latest phase of development were once again Sir Robert McAlpine, who built the original centre in the 70s. And when you're changing the heart of Newcastle, there's no shortage of local pride. Been um, not from the northeast, you get caught up in the, um, the, 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 the passion that everyone has got towards working on this scheme and um, trying to create something here that people will be proud of. 
this region, I think, has its own um, culture in a sense when it comes to that. I don't think you get that in too many other cities where you've got um, so many people so passionate about something that is a major part of a city centre. It was in September 1976 that Eldon Square was officially opened by Her Majesty the Queen, though the first phase had thrown open its doors earlier in March. It made a name for the city and, and I really think it was a foundation for the city. Newcastle hadn't been associated with a strong retail provision. It became a, a much stronger retail destination. More and more people were coming. Lots of the stuff that's been done has been done on the back of the success of Eldon Square. The centrepiece of the new St Andrew's Way phase is Debenhams, 175,000 square feet of state-of-the-art retailing. Basically, we take an open shell and turn it into a trading shop to get all the materials and get manpower sorted and get it physically done. It's not easy. But we've got good guys on site, and that's what you need. I think there's a lot of businesses are re relocating and able to get more space. I think the mall itself is going to be a very fashionable mall. It's going to invite people to come down um, and shop in areas of Newcastle that they wouldn't have normally been to. And it's going to lead very nicely into what is an area where, if you like, retail meets leisure with the gate centre being on the doorstep as well. The city as a whole is being gradually pulled towards Central Station. Actually, Newcastle is still underprovided for in terms of retail shopping opportunities. There are some retailers who are not with us at the moment who'd like to be here. I just think you're going to have continuing growth of that retail centre and this extension to Eldon Square gives us, you know, one more piece in that overall jigsaw. It didn't take Eldon Square long from its opening to take an active role in the life of the city like the Newcastle 900 celebrations of 1979. Birthday celebrations are always delightful, especially the birthday of a famous and ancient city. There were innovations, like the Christmas shopping nights for disabled people. The centre enjoyed a string of high-profile visitors. And the shoppers just kept on rolling up. June 2009, and the redevelopment has reached a landmark stage. Partners in the project are invited for the formal topping out ceremony. The city was actively regenerating itself, with more than 30,000 tonnes of the demolished concrete and brickwork reused in the new construction. and the project was bang on target to satisfy a basic local need. The North East seems to have this absolute desire for, for fashion and for buying, um, and you know, retailers were telling us long before we began the development that they needed more space. The core philosophies of developing the centre was make it look outwards more, have more outward facing retail units, make it fit in with the buildings surrounding it rather than it being this fairly austere brick built building right in the middle of what is a wonderful city. Eldon Square has constantly evolved. Its 10th anniversary saw a first significant refurbishment. In 1987, another royal visitor opened the Newgate Street food court. But from the exterior, the centre looked the 70s same, till the major stunning 21st century facelift. Phase one saw new restaurants overlook the old Eldon Square with major changes along Blackett Bridge. The new bus station was opened in the spring of 2007. Phase two to the north of the square changed the whole landscape, introducing a new thoroughfare through the city with St George's Way. When the original development uh, came forward, shopping centres were regarded as very much inward looking. Philosophy's changed now over 30 years, and I think everyone recognises that, that shopping centres have to be part of the centre. You can go to a lot of shopping centres at nine o'clock in the morning 
and they can feel dead, they can feel lifeless, whereas Eldon Square does give you the impression that it is one of the streets of the city. Eldon Square has always been a joint venture between co-owners, capital shopping centres and Newcastle City Council. Council leader John Shipley knows they're building the city's history. Well, I'm really impressed with the quality. I mean, the, the, it's, it's everything, really. It's the use of glass and the use of light. Yep. Um, but, but also, the, um, just the general internal design is particularly good. And what this does is draws you in. Wow. A strong retail heart which Eldon Square has provided then means outside of Eldon Square um, there is additional business because there's additional footfall. More visitors coming, more people coming, more people at weekends, part of the weekend tourist trade that we get. That identity of Newcastle as a place that people want to come to because it's got many facilities the shopping core is absolutely central to that. Without it, our economy would not be as strong as it is. New Mall is named after St Andrew's Church, its neighbour across the street. The shoppers are part of the church's community and the centre is very much more than a mere parade of shops. It does have a character and uh, it's an interesting ongoing character and I think with the new build and everything that's come around, it's a freshness and it's like us, they changes all the time. If you're sometimes at home by yourself, you know, what better place to come and sit? And people in Newcastle, as we know, are friendly. It gives it a community. It's lively, isn't it? I mean, uh, you come in earlier and there's people here, there's people later at night shopping here, and some of the old stores have changed their names. But in some way, that history and that vibrance still goes on. For Gordon Allenson, the memories go back to the 70s as he senses that familiar excitement that builds on the edge of an era. Well, I like the, the height of this mall. It's cavernous and it's beautiful. And this is really providing some retailing at an end of the scheme, which was pretty weak. And to find that retailers of the status here prepare to move to this part of the scheme with the confidence they have really thrills me. From the lettings point of view, it has been absolutely sensational, despite the fact that the, you know, the, the country and the world indeed have been going through very difficult financial times. We've been able to let every space in the mall at mall level, 23 new retail units, and every one of them has been taken with really good, high quality retailers. So I would say it's gone pretty well.